Hi there, I'm Dr. Brian Hill. I'm the director of the Lymphoid Malignancies Program at the Cleveland Clinic, Tussock Cancer Institute. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the uh, CLL Society uh, to uh, interview Dr. Susan Slager from the Mayo Clinic about some of the interesting work that she presented uh, regarding CLL and uh, CLL precursor conditions at the most recent uh, meeting of the American Society of Hematology from 2021. Um, so uh, Dr. Slager, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, so why don't you just uh, give us an overview of the, the study and some background for the audience uh, on what monoclonal B-cell lymphocytosis is and, and the biobank that you have at Mayo Clinic and, and what your findings were. Okay, great. Um, so monoclonal B-cell lymphocytosis, or MBL, is a, is a precursor to CLL. And what that means is that everybody with CLL actually has to pass through MBL stage to get to CLL, but everybody that has M not everybody that has MBL will go on to get to CLL. And most of the work that has been done in MBL has been done in patients that have been identified to have MBL through the clinic, through the clinic practice. And so we uh, conducted a study to look at MBL uh, through screening. So these are individuals who are part of the Mayo Clinic Biobank study who are seen at Mayo Clinic for whatever reason, generally in uh, the general medical practice. And we, uh, they participated in this biobank study and provided blood samples. And so we started screening in their blood samples for, uh, for uh, MBL. So, so these are healthy folks walking in off the street uh, with no specific complaints necessarily is that right so they're just going in for their general medical exam i mean some of it, it's your general population of 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 adults going yeah. into to the clinic mm -hmm. and so they were screened not to have any hematological cancers uh, mm -hmm. so we excluded those individuals in our study and so we screened them for mbl and so they are asymptomatic in fact they don't know they have nbl the ones that we've identified and so then we followed them uh, uh, for about nine years to see what if there was any association of MBL and with your overall survival. And what we found, we screened about 7,000 individuals in our study, uh, and we found uh, about 18% of them had MBL. And wow. the prevalence of MBL actually increases with age. And so when you're above 90 years old, we have a prevalence rate of about 40% of the Individuals over 90 have MBL. So not everybody will have MBL, but it is a common condition. And so then what we found is that even though you have this common condition, you actually have the same overall survival as an individual who doesn't have this condition, which, so, is, a, which is a good thing. Yeah, So and so what was the sort of average age of the, the subjects who walked in and had their blood drawn and had MBL? They were in, higher than the other when the, the patients who didn't have MBL. So the average age is about in their 60s. Uh, so it was an elder, more elderly population. Uh, mm -hmm. than, um, and uh, the prevalence does increase with age. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do, our overall research program, is to see if there's any clinical significance of having MBL uh, even though you may not progress to CLL, uh, is there any other clinical issues that you may encounter if you have this precursor condition? And so what we're finding um, is that with overall survival, you seem to have the same or a similar survival rate as an individual that doesn't have this condition. But we've shown in the past that if you have this condition, you have an increased risk of getting hospitalized due to infections. And so that was one of our first findings of clinical significance of having MBL. Yeah, so this brings up an interesting point that I'm sure you encounter clinically, which is, you know, many times, uh, you know, patients are diagnosed with CLL and they come in for their first meeting with the hematologist. And, and we see these folks frequently as first or second opinions. And a, a lot of times if they've been seen in our system, we can look back in time and we see, you know, maybe they had surgery here five years ago or 10 years ago 
And you, if you look closely at the CBCs that were drawn at the time of surgery, CBC is the complete blood count. Um, and we can actually see a high lymphocyte count at that time. And, and, and many times I sort of suspect that they did have unrecognized monoclonal B-cell lymphocytosis at that time. Um, exactly. you, and you do have to have a, a count over 5,000 clonal cells. So if the lymphocyte count is only 4,000 or under 5,000, um, that may not necessarily even be flagged or caught as you know clinically significant. And so your data would sort of suggest that there's no deleterious consequence. Nothing bad happened because it wasn't recognized because you, in your very large study, which I think is a wonderful uh, data to have for the field, it really shows in a bigger study than any other to date that there's no detriment in survival to not recognizing this earlier. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so um, that, I, I think that's very reassuring for patients to, to sort of know that nothing, <laughs> nothing bad, there's no negative consequence. I think. Well, like I said, our earlier study, you do have an increased risk of getting hospitalized due to infections. And, mm -hmm. and, and so that's, that's one of the issues that we have found to having it. But as far as overall survival, that looks really good. Yeah. Looks, yeah. We have a very large study to suggest that it doesn't seem to have a, a, an impact there. Right. Was there an impact on the, the, the count? That, so you can have very, very small amounts of these clonal B cells in circulation, so-called low count right. MBL, or you can have higher numbers. Was there an impact of the, whether you had low count or high count in the outcomes? Well, what we presented at, at ASH, we only focused on the low count, mm -hmm. but we do have high count in our study. And we do show that high count MBLs, those individuals with a higher clonal count of these cells, do have a reduced overall survival compared okay. to individuals, uh, uh, compared to controls. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not a major difference, uh, but it is, it, is a, it is a difference. But that had been previously shown uh, in other studies as well. Mm -hmm. So we're... Um, well, the literature is a little bit mixed in that, I guess. Were you able to do any molecular studies of the uh, of the samples? Obviously, these are archived over a long period of time um, and may or may not be uh, present in sufficient quantities to do any testing for uh, molecular features that might have uh, resulted in poorer outcome. Uh, well, good question. Um, we are just embarking on that. Okay. We have a, a grant under review from uh, National Institute of Health, uh, where we're trying to look at uh, uh, the tumor DNA, the DNA in those cells, to see if they have any of the known um, genetic variants that have been seen in individuals with CLL. And we do have a few individuals who are low count MBLs that also have some of these uh, genetic features that you see in CLL. And so our hypothesis, our question we wanna be asking is, are those individuals that have these early events that you can see when you have a really uh, small number of cells, are they the ones that progress to CLL? And those that have, have absence of those events, um, then there's, those are the ones that you don't have to worry about the progression to CLL. And so, yeah. uh, so we started seeing that and we do see right now about 2% of our sample having some of the genetic features. Okay. Okay. So, so um, more, more to come on uh, delving into the sort of the risk categorization, because yeah. obviously, you know, we would love to have early intervention strategies as I'm sure, you know, patients frequently ask, you know, if we had known about it five years ago, could we have done something earlier? And you're probably aware that there are early intervention strategies for high-risk CLL. Right. Um, there's a big trial uh, ongoing to compare early versus deferred treatment for high-risk disease. But you know, right now, uh, MBL patients wouldn't, aren't eligible. So you actually have to have a diagnosis of CLL. But if you're trying to get earlier and earlier, maybe, maybe MBL is also worthy of targeting eventually. Absolutely, absolutely.